What's up, guys? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Morning Show for August 8th, 2017. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Mike Drucker. Hello, I'm here. Making I'm back. his return. You were just you were just in town. I, I was just, just in town. hanging out. And I texted Greg and I was like, can I do something? And, and Greg like, was like, course. yeah, sure, all right, fine. So wait, why are you here? I'm here because uh, I just finished uh, the season two of Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix. Congrats. We just finished wrapping it. Season two, okay. Season two, yeah. I, I think it's much, much better than season one. We really took a lot of the criticisms to heart, and we I think we made a much better season. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm here, and I'm sort of finishing up personal projects, writing stuff for myself, and I like San Francisco. So what does that mean, writing stuff for yourself? Is that like stand-up stuff, or...? It's stand-up stuff. It's also, when you want to get hired on a show like a sitcom, uh, a lot of time you have to have something called a spec script. And in the past, a spec script used to be something like you'd write a sample of a show. Like, if you liked Archer a lot, you'd write a sample episode of Archer. Mm. That's fallen out of style. Now you have to write an original pilot, of which course. is a lot harder because yeah. you can't just go, I know these characters, I know the games that they mm. play with each other. You have to create a new thing, but also create a new thing that's marketable to people. Like, if you want to be on Archer, you have to create a show that's like Archer, but not so much like Archer that they think you've just copied Archer. Hmm. So it's a really narrow thing, um, but I am I like writing, but I can only do it when I'm really isolated. I'm very easily distracted. So I, what I like to do when I'm writing something for myself is I'll book a hotel in another city so I don't have like my TV. Like I still have my Switch with me, but I don't have like everything I have of all my comfort, so I'm not just like easily You're limiting your distracted. excuses. Right, you have bad hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, yeah, you just limit your excuses and write. Okay. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. So, how is the, the stand-up thing doing? Have you been doing a lot of stand-up? I have. Well, you know what? I haven't as much as I'd like. I, I think the last big show I did was Kind of Funny Live. Which is available now, youtube.com slash kind of funny. Your set it. was amazing. And also, I just love that Nick introed you. It felt right. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like this Padawan-esque yeah. thing we got going on. Um, I, Nick should, I, is Nick my Padawan or am I Nick's Padawan, though? Nick, you are definitely... Nick's... Nick's master? Master. Ugh. Yeah, I like that. All Sounds right. hot. I'm uh, into it. Yeah, that was great. It was just with, um, you know, when I got, when we started doing the season two of Bill Nye, like, a lot of, it's like 12, 14 hour days, especially when you're shooting. Mm. So a lot of the time, like, I went straight from finishing season two of Adam Ruins Everything right into Bill Nye Saves the World. Like, I didn't even have a week off. I finished, and then that Monday started the next show I was working on. So, I've been doing stand-up, but because I have these Monday to Friday jobs, it's hard to go on the road. Yeah. So, when these shows happen, they're seasonal, right? Yeah. You write, you, you're there for the shoot. So, yeah. when you're a writer on the show, what does that entail? You write the episodes before they happen, obviously. Yeah. But then do you have to be at the taping for, like, are you, like, making rewrites yeah. on the shoot? Yeah, and it also depends on, it depends on the host, it depends on the show, like, it depends on the director of the show, the producers. Some shows you write, they make them, and you never hear anything again. Some, they really want the writer there because, especially, like, a show at, like, Adam Ruins Everything, Adam is very interactive with the writer, so we'll be on set, and he'll be like, hey, I want to change this line. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? And he doesn't want you to be a yes man. He wants you to be like, oh, that's a great idea, or, like, what if we did this instead? Um, you know, but on shows I've done in the past, like, something like when I was writing on The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon had been doing it for decades before I was a writer, so like, you know, you'd write something and they'd take it and they'd make it. It wasn't necessarily as interactive. Mm. Um, but different shows have different needs for different writers. Um, on a show like Bill Nye or Adam, which are both sort of educational shows, we'd spend a couple weeks really researching topics, talking to experts, interviewing scientists, uh, figuring out what we were right and wrong about, then we'd write the episode, then we'd make it. Um, Bill Nye's show was in front of an audience. And this season, we also have a much bigger audience, so the audience actually sounds like it's there. Good, good. Uh, it's, it's, a always, much, it's always It's a much key. better audience. <laughs> it's a much bigger audience. Um, so we did that, but Adam's show is, you know, we shoot on locations. Mm -hmm. So it's an entirely different setup. Man, okay. So then you take that, you, you write it, you shoot it, then do you just not have a job for? Yeah. Until the next season? Um, you don't have, usually you, you look for another job. And it's not like you look for another job like, I quit, I'm done. It's just, okay, I know that we're not coming back until... December or January, February or March, and so you try to find a three-month gig or a four-month gig, and sometimes that means you don't come back, or sometimes it means you find a short gig and do that. Some people will even just, you know, I'm not married, so I don't have, like, th the dual incomes, but, like, some people will just not work. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, okay, I'm going to be a stay-at-home parent this time, or I'm going to just work on projects for myself. Wow. Um, some people just tour, which I've done in the past, but I'm more of a, I think I'm more of a writer than a performer. 
Hmm, that's interesting. So I'm very interested in this stuff now because of Nick. Nick yeah. went from zero to hero when it comes to the stand-up yeah. stuff, and yeah. seeing him talk about it on GOG, and then yeah. now go to the open mics and just continue to do it, like yeah. kind of behind our back for a while, which was awesome. That's, the way, that's the way you have to do it. Be revealed that he just did it, and now he'll invite us out to the things. We're right. seeing him get better and practice his set, yeah. and his set goes from three minutes to five minutes. I think he's at 10 minutes now. Yeah. Like, that is so interesting to me, but where are you at in, in that kind of game? Like, you're obviously past the open mic stage, sure. but like, what, what does Nick have to look forward to and where are you at now? Um, well, I'm at a weird place in that I've sort of transitioned more into writing. Um, like, I'll still tour, I'll still headline a couple times, but I'm, you know, I don't love doing the road that much. Mm. I like it, um, I get very lonely on the road. So like, the hour I'm on stage I love, but the other 23 hours always tend to bum me out. And I realized that and I was like, oh, I don't mind having a desk job. I just want to sit at a desk doing something that I find creative, mm. if that makes sense. Uh, what Nick has to look forward to is, you know, getting passed at clubs, especially around San Francisco, which has clubs like Cobbs and they have Punchline. Um, you Punchline's do, his goal right now. Punch, Punchline's great. Um, and you do those shows and then they start doing something, you start opening at those clubs. And opening means you do seven to ten depending on who the headliner is and what they want. You know, it could be even like five. But like, let's say seven to ten minutes up front, you're sort of like, easing everybody, you do announcements, you tell people not to, you know, shout, take photos, but you're also doing your material, so it's sort of hosting like you'd host anything, but also you get to do your material. After that, something called featuring, and featuring is the middle guy, or woman, or a woman. Middle uh, person. It's the middle person, uh, and you do about 30, you do about 20 to 30, again, depending on what the headliner wants. Some headliners don't want to do a lot of time, so you as the feature will do more time to complement that. Um, sometimes they want to do a lot of time, so you as the feature will do just a little bit of time. And sometimes the host and the feature will be combined. Hmm. Um, but the feature, usually you're paid like 500, 750, maybe more depending on who the headliner is and what the club is. But it's not a lot of money and usually they use local people because they won't pay to put you up. Got it. And uh, I know when I was starting, I would sort of eat the cost of it. Like I would fly to a city like Philly and do Helium or Portland and do Helium. Helium's a good comedy chain. Um, you know, <laughs> Helium's, Helium's, my, Helium's, Helium's one of everywhere. my favorite comedy chains. Um, <laughs> but you'd go to like, I'd go to like Philly or Washington DC and I would pay like $300 to stay in a hotel for the weekend and then make $500 and mm. then with the plane ticket I might have lost a hundred bucks. But you get to do 30 minutes five times in a weekend and that's really good for improving you. And so if you're featuring, does it really matter who you're opening for? Like is that something where you're like, oh man, I get to say I open for... Yeah. Well, not, it, it matters who you open for, one, because of the audience. Sometimes, you know, there's this, there's two, my, there's two schools in stand-up. There's either you should appeal to everybody or you should figure out who your audience is and go after it. Mm -hmm. And if you appeal to everybody, that's great, and you can usually do well, but you'll always find a headliner who has an audience that's not your audience. Hmm. And so sometimes you'll feature and you'll do 30 minutes in front of people who don't want you there. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's someone who disagrees with your politics and that's fine, or if it's someone, you know, like you'll get somebody who's like a huge party dude who's not my audience and they'll be like bachelorette parties and bachelor parties. And um, you're making Castlevania jokes. And I'm making Castlevania <laughs> jokes. So <laughs> the headliner, and it also sometimes the headliner, like when I, you know, featured for Brian Posehn or Patton Oswalt or Jeannie Garofalo, like these audiences come in that are these audiences that are my audiences. Mm -hmm. There are people that speak to me who like what I like, so it's a lot easier. Now, yeah, you should develop skills where you can appeal to everyone, but I won't lie when I say the headliners that you like are a lot more fun to work with. Yeah. And sometimes you'll work with headliners that are assholes. Am really? I allowed to swear? I'm sorry. Oh, go, yeah, you're allowed to do Am I allowed to swear? No, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> I, just, I was told I'm allowed to swear as much as you want. That's what you guys get for subscribing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you get headliners that are assholes. They're they're not like mean to you, like, in some, but you know, you're you're hanging out with someone for three nights for hours at a time, and you'll have someone who totally ignores you. On the flip side, you'll have someone who's like, hey, you want to hang out? You'll see movies with someone. You'll you'll make a new friend. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool things and weird things about the road uh, that Nick has to look forward to. So the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is the duration of a set. Yeah. Because I've been watching a lot of stand-up specifically on Netflix, yeah. and Nick and I have kind of been every week just talking about, oh, which ones did you watch, and comparing them. Yeah. There was a series called The Stand-Ups yeah. recently. Did you see that? I did, yeah. Where it was 30 minutes instead of an hour. Yeah. And I think that has a much better time. I because agree. it's like it's much tighter and it just gets get gets in and gets out. Right. Whereas the hour can kind of drag on a bit and I found myself, even if it's really funny, right. being like, oh I can pause this and come back later and then I don't really ever come back later. Yeah. And with you, 
the idea of burning material. Like, have you ever had a one up one hour stand up special? No, no. I've done I've done like small things on stuff like CISO, which is always hard to say. But like, um, I I haven't done a one hour stand up special. Because then that is impressive to me. Because for Kind of Funny Live, for example, you did a ten minute set at yeah. Kind of Funny Live two, and then you did an entirely different ten minute set at Kind of Funny Live three. Yeah, that's twenty minutes of material that. You might not want to waste yeah. on us <laughs> on some stupid internet shit, knowing that it's going to be put out there and yeah. that everyone can see it and, and all of that. Like, does that stuff cross your mind, or do you just kind of like have enough material, or are you able to like make curated sets based on where you are? Um, yes and no. One, it's a good challenge, you know, because it's so easy, especially for someone like me who doesn't do stand up as much as I'd like. It's so easy to fall into just having the same ten minutes that you do for fifteen years. I haven't been doing comedy for fifteen years, but like I know people who like. You know, I saw them eight years ago where I'm like, oh, you're still doing that joke. And I've done that. Like, I've done a set, you know, I've been doing, you know, I'll do like a 45-minute set somewhere and I'll be like, you know, okay, I can see this crowd doesn't like this new stuff. I need to go into old stuff. And it, it's annoying. That said, um, it doesn't really burn material. Like, if you watch carefully, you'll see someone on a, do a late-night set on something like Conan. And then you'll see that material sort of repurposed for a Comedy Central Presents type thing. It's not unusual to take that material that you've used elsewhere and then package it up in that hour, in that half hour. Mm -hmm. It's not always the best thing to do, but it definitely happens, and it's not illegal in any sense. What's cool, too, is like seeing Nick when he did the thing in Kind of Funny Life 3, and then right... My timeline's mixed up, because I don't remember if it was before we actually did KFL or after it was right. published, but we published uh, his stand-up that he did at an open mic, and it was the same set, but it was so different, just yeah. based on like little changes that he made and all that stuff. Like. How hard is it to keep track of the jokes in your head? And like, is that, at this point, are yeah. you just like the, your material that you know you just have, and you can kind of pull from it at any point and like mix and match? No, I forget stuff all the time. Like, I'll have once in a while, I'll have a friend who's a comedian be like, "Oh, you, I used to love that joke you did," and I was like, "Why don't I do that anymore?" Like, I'll forget that I had this thing that I really like doing, and it just slipped my mind. I mean, some people are masters of remembering everything. I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks that are just full of junk and set list that I'll go back to and be like, oh, I need to revive that, or I should like bring that back but add to it or change it a certain way. That's the other thing, too, is you'll have old material that it's not like you write a new joke and it's different from the old joke. You'll have an old joke, and then you're like, oh, I have a new idea that adds to it. Then you'll mm. add to it. Then you'll add to it. So you're still doing that old joke, but that old joke might have been 30 seconds, and now you have six minutes that that's the foundation of. Yeah. I saw recently you've been doing a thing in LA, the, I forget the name of it, but Shitty Games. Shit Arcade. What is that? Shit Arcade, uh, August 27th, and if you're in uh, Los Angeles, we have comedians, and Greg did the first one. We have comedians and streamers and games people play, vi play bad video games from the past and just comment on them live, sort of Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. Um, but we're still figuring out the format. We've only done three of them. We do them at uh, Meltdown Comics, cool. where Kumail used to have his live show. And it's super fun. You know, we've had games like we've had Shaq Fu. Great. We've had classic. Uh, we've had Bubsy. We've oh, had no. Mick Kids. So right now, Mick it's Kids. Mick Kids. That's a, what system was that on? NES. NES. Mick Kids. Good lord. We've I had, can't even imagine. Um, the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen organizer for Game Boy Color. We've had the French translator for Game Boy. So really bad the video French game. translator <laughs> <laughs> for Game Boy. And the fun of it is, is it's sort of this like interactive event. We give away a lot of the games. I don't. The only games I don't give away are the ones that cost me like fifty dollars to buy. Yeah. Like I recently, for the next one coming the twenty seventh, bought Time Killers. Time Killers. Time Killers is a fighting game that was supposed to be a Mortal Kombat killer. And in it, it's hyper violent. You can cut off people's limbs mid fight, and then they have to fight missing limbs. And they did. That's kind of cool, wasn't it? Kind of, it's kind of cool, but the game's awful. Okay. It's 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 like it wants to be Mortal Kombat meets Samurai Showdown, and it turns it's out Shaq -Fu. it's Shaq Fu. <laughs> and they made a port for the Genesis that's even worse. Ugh. It looks like it looks. You know those old DOS games that had like bright palettes, but like it felt like they didn't have enough color, so they yeah. just, it was just super bright. That's what it looks like. Mm. Um, but it cost me sixty dollars, and I'm like, I'm not gonna give this away. Like, I think my threshold is like thirty bucks for giving away. Games. <laughs> I'm gonna keep Time Killers. One day I might need to bust I might it out need to again. Bust it out again. <laughs> I gave away Shaq Fu in the box, uh, and I gave out Bubsy in the box. So I need to find a Fucking new game that Bubsy. I can give away in the box. How stoked are you for the new Bubsy? Uh, Bubsy what is, Strikes what, Back or whatever the fuck whatever it's called. Whatever the opposite of stoked is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I like, I like, I like that company. Was it Way Forward that's doing it? Is it way forward? No, I don't think it is. Hold on, Who let me let me no, look that up. Or is it uh, in uh, that one? Like GameStop. Guys. Oh, is it? Or... <laughs> <laughs> what? So it sounds like GameStop. Sounds like games. <laughs> sounds like video games. We can talk about whatever the fuck for we children. 
Uh, yeah, no, it's being made by Tomo. Oh, Tomo. I'm way Black off. Black Forest Games. Yeah, no. Why this, did I think it was Way Forward? I, I don't know. Way oh, Forward make good games. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, 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 no. This looks like it's going to be what I, trash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't need another Bubsy, you guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny Morning Show. Each and every weekday, we get together right here on twitch.tv slash games and talk about all the nerdy things that we want to talk about right now over on youtube.com slash games. The Metroid Samus Returns Let's Play that we did is available. You should go check it out. It totally sold me on the game. I want to play it. Sam from uh, the Nintendo Treehouse came by, showed off the Amiibo, which first off, I mean, I don't, I'm not an Amiibo guy. Squishy Amiibo? But yeah, the Metroid one's squishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and damn, man, the Samus one is beautiful. I'm like, <sighs> fuck, I actually kind of want it. But I can't. I can't get into the Amiibo, because once I get one, right. I'm going to go down the road. I have hill. a giant pillowcase full of them. Like, I just bought a bunch for Splatoon 2. <laughs> and and like, I don't <laughs> use them. Like, I use them in Zelda, and, but like, I don't, I don't know why I buy them. I yeah. don't know why I buy these. They get it. They know how to fucking get in there. They know how to get it. Keep going, man. Uh, But Metroid Samus Returns, I was not really like when it was announced. I was like, "What the fuck?" Metroid Prime Four blew my mind. And then, oh, and also after the E3 Direct, here's another announcement: a 2D Metroid game for the 3DS. For the 3DS, it's like who would have ever imagined? Right. So I I was excited because it's new Metroid. Yeah. Or remake of Metroid. Whatever. It's a, a Metroid game in 2017. It's pretty much a new Metroid. Uh, but I was like, I never... Metroid 2 is the one Metroid game I didn't beat. Yeah. I was kind of like, uh, so it being remade, sure, I'll give it yeah. the benefit of the doubt. We were talking about it earlier. Yeah. Zero Mission, one of the most underrated Metroid games. It's an Fantastic. amazing Metroid game. But I still wrote this off because I'm like, I'm on my Switch. I don't want to play 3DS. I don't really like the look of the game. Right. Like, there's all the stuff. I'm like, whatever. But playing it, I was just like, oh, you can see my excitement. In the Let's Play, where I'm just like, I gotta fucking play. I this gotta game. check it out. It looks, it looks great. And there's a new melee mechanic that is super satisfying, where you can punch one of the motherfuckers and then shoot them, and it's just like, yeah. When you when you pull it off, it it reminds me of Smash Bros. a lot. Yeah. Like when you nail a counter with uh, one of the fire emblems. Yeah, it's you just, just great. feel so good. So good. Uh, so you can check that out. Awesome. Um, I think that's all of the housekeeping stuff that we got. Yes, it is. Let's get into the news. This comes from over at IGN. There we go. Joey is on the, the board today, by the way, everybody. Her first time. <laughs> Kevin is doing something. He's like helping her, but he's just sitting across the room, <laughs> which I appreciate. But I like that even when you're not doing something, you're still attacked. Yeah. Like no matter what position you have, mm-hmm. you are yeah. under attack. I'm watering the show. Mm-hmm. You're doing good work. Mm-hmm. I'm on your side here. Thank I'm not. You. I'm on your side. So this, this news is uh, <laughs> going to be particularly thrilling to you, Mike Drucker, and I say that. Oh, my favorite movie series residence. of all time. Yeah. James Cameron, <laughs> who's currently at work on Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5. <laughs> well, I, I literally, I know that it's like, my friend Dana Schwartz is this writer, and she had this tweet once that was perfect, which is like, it, it's the biggest movie of all time, and you cannot quote anything from it. Mm. Like, there's nothing. I see you. That was a quote. Yeah, you could, you could. That's in every movie. Is True. the phrase like True. I see, like I don't, I don't remember anything about Avatar, and I saw it twice. <laughs> I actually really like Avatar. You and I know people like give it a lot of shit. Oh, it's Pocahontas. Oh, it's Dancing with Wolves. Whatever. I thought it was a good interpretation of that story. Right. An amazing use of three D. Amazing use sure. of three D. But Avatar feels like it's like someone you dated in college. I don't hate it, but I just I'm like that. That was a thing that existed. And see, that's true. Do I need? More? Do I need two, three, four, four and five? No. Now it gets better. Uh, In the September issue of Empire, Cameron confirmed that Colonel Quaritch, Stephen Lang, will indeed return to serve as the primary antagonist in each film right up to five. Now, I don't know if you remember this. I don't. He died violently (laughs) with two arrows through the chest. Is he now an avatar? I don't don't know. (laughs) Like, he should be dead as fuck. Uh, But somehow he's going to come back for four sequels. Do you believe that we'll get Avatar 5? I hope not. Here, you know what? <laughs> I know Avatar's a movie, but Avatar to me is like everything that's wrong with a video game series when they're like, we're creating a whole new world. And I'm like, just make the first one good. I don't need you to promise me that it'll be good by the fifth game in the series. Just make the first one good. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy is I only believe that this might happen because Avatar Land or whatever the fu- world of Pandora yeah. just happened this uh, year oh, in why? Disney World. And I'm like... They're making a Damn, Star Wars really land. They need an Avatar land. <laughs> they did it though, and it looks super cool. Uh, but it's like, why? Why the fuck are they doing this? And why is he the bad guy in all of them? And, and also, why would you tell us that? Now we know he doesn't die, or maybe he does die, but he comes maybe back. He comes, like the main character was a twin brother. 
So maybe he has a twin brother too. Was he? There we go. Pandora were twin brothers. We just know that his last name is Qu Quaritch, <laughs> so it could be his twin brother like Dave Quaritch, who's also a colonel. Oh my god. And then he has a triplet. He's probably higher ranking too. I yeah. don't like... He's a successful brother. <laughs> <laughs> I want a beef with how colonel's spelled. Yeah. The, the word in general, yeah. Colonel? <laughs> it's like, who the fuck decided that? They don't deserve a raise. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out on Blu-ray mm -hmm. very soon, August 22nd, and they released a music video uh, featuring David Hasselhoff. I thought we'd watch it. At least part of it. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I like Are this. Are audio? No, we're not. Hold on, sorry. Joey fucked things up. This is not true. There we go. Oh my god. See, you've got to give it up to the Guardians producers. Right. Like, they did this. They didn't need to do this. They did this. <laughs> they made this happen. For a Blu-ray release. Man, I miss music videos with sets like that. You just don't see it anymore. I will say... We do. Korea. What I've liked... What? Korea, right? In South Korea? Oh, K-pop? Nah, no, that's different though. Th those sets are way more advanced yeah. than this. Where's the Hoff? Oh, he comes in later. What, Have you what? seen this already? I've seen this already. Oh. No, I'm okay. I'm okay <laughs> seeing it again. It's What's amazing about this is, you know, we've all worked in making videos. The amount of work that was put into making this look like it was not a lot of work was probably so much work. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that is so true. Like, they had to, like... I don't, I don't like that it's still 4x3. Like... <laughs> I love it. No. This, well, this would have come out in the 70s. Sure, sure. Back when televisions were... Oh, Lord. <laughs> the fucking green The robot device. doing the robot. Oh, she's nailing it. See? The key is so bad. It's, it's, that, it's so great. But again, like, there had to be... Because every editor who worked on this, their instinct had to be like, I, this, this yeah. looks bad. Yeah, this yeah, could yeah. look shitty. This could look shitty. It, yeah, exactly. Because you, cause you've also seen like poorly done 80s and 70s parodies where you're like, I can tell this was shot now, you just used a filter. Like you really have to work to make things look bad. There we go. <laughs> I'm really happy that he understands what his career is. Yeah. You know? I think he went through a phase where he didn't mm. and he's come out the other side. And God bless it. Yeah. All right, we can we can stop this now. You can watch the rest. This is good over on YouTube, but this is fantastic. The next story. Next story. Once again, comes from IGN. Let's see it. Joe Scrabble's a made-up name. Uh, <laughs> Judge Dredd, Mega City One. Carl Urban is in talks yes. to reprise lead role for TV. Yes. Mega City One producer Jason Kingsley has confirmed that the team behind the show is in talks with Carl Urban and shed a little light on how the show will handle its plot in a statement to IGN. Kingsley said, We've been in discussion with Carl about his possible involvement in Judge Dredd Mega City 1, which is a horrible name, for some, for some time. These conversations continue, but we're keen, he's keen, it's just a case of us making sure this show is everything we want it to be. This needs to be done right. The fans deserve it. Our team is working hard on scripts for the first season, creating engaging multi-thread storylines, one of which will be Dredd's, but others which will take us to the wider world of Mega City 1. Mega City I didn't even know that Judge Dredd, a TV show, was in talks. I feel like everything's always in talks. This also could be nothing. Yeah. Th my thing is, I don't want it to be anything unless it's on Netflix. Or, or HBO. HBO H I think or yeah. Amazon or Hulu. Yeah. Like, something that they can just fucking be Judge Dredd. Exactly. You want it to have that violence and that over-the-top Judge Dredd qu that, the, that the recent one had and like the Stallone one did not have. Yeah. Well, the Stallone had... The one had its own kind of magic. It, <laughs> it, it, it did have its own kind of magic. Magic, Rob Schneider. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Who was also in Demolition Man with still uh, another Stallone. Another Cinematic another Universe, right, yeah. yeah. Another wow. great movie. Uh, but, I mean, Dread 3D was amazing. Dread 3D was amazing. Um, oh, speaking of that. Yeah. Producer of that, Adi Shankar, also produced Castlevania on Netflix. Yeah. I've been talking a lot about this. Have you seen it yet? I loved it. Good. Me too. I, I really I want liked more it. now. Here's what I liked about it. It felt like... 
uh, a Saturday morning cartoon for adults in no. the sense that it's not like you know it's not like this like heavy prestige television where I'm like okay I got to follow all these themes and learn these characters backstories I'm like oh they're killing vampires and shit and chopping off priests hands all right let's do this let's like, go it's just fun and it feels like what I would have watched fun. as a kid it's just fun no yeah 100%. like remember when TV was fun you guys remember when you could turn on TV and like oh this is enjoyable and you didn't well, have like a four hour all my favorite characters are getting murdered right yeah although did you see the latest Rick and Morty. The no, Pickle I Rick. I'm waiting till it's all done. I'm gonna just watch all at once. I thought it was overhyped because I saw like the whole mention of it online yeah. and like, and I have friends who work on the show and they talked about it and I was like, okay, good. It might be Pickle Rick might be the best episode of television I've seen all year. Oh, like, okay. I liked it more than the most recent Game of Thrones, which I know is insane. That's wild. Yeah, I need to catch up on this there, show. There must be a map. I've only you've seen, seen the first three, three episodes. episodes. The first episode, the yeah. one of the best I was like, I don't get it. Right. The second episode, the one with the fucking dogs, the dog. like, uh, like there was a, uh, yeah. the dogs became sentient. I don't even know whatever the fuck no, the word smart. Sentient's not the word. Smart, so they yeah. Didn't pee in the room anymore. Yeah, and yeah. that shit was hilarious. And then the third one kind of lost me. It's it's the series the does go up and down a little. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, I'm saying the third one. I think is the dream one where. Yeah. Do you want? Lost you. It was in a weird alien planet, but I think it was in a dream. Yeah, they I don't know. I feel like I just need to be in the right headspace and just commit and yeah. just let it flow over me. If you watch, you can watch the latest one. It's sort of like, you know, not really part of the main storyline. So you could watch it without really spoiling earlier seasons. That's like one of two, one or two things. But it escalates so fast. And it gets insane. And I don't want to spoil anything. Because the way it gets insane, you're just watching this and you're like, oh, TV can do this. A cartoon can do this. It's... <laughs> So good. Like, it was like I watched it while I was doing this sort of writing retreat. I watched it four times. Oh my God. Because I just, I was taking notes. I was being like, this is a choice they made. And not like a choice they made where I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, this is such a good choice. Like, there's scenes in that episode where, especially as a writer, when you're like, oh, they could have easily made the character go one way and they made them go a different way, which up the energy of it. Hmm. It's such a good, it's a well written episode. It has amazing action in it. It's perfect TV. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, next story comes from Deadline. Paramount will now construct amusement park oh. on March 2019. Well, you know, that could be good. So here's the thing. Kevin and I grew up with a Paramount amusement park. Great Paramount's America. Great America, which is... Six Flags now? Which is, no, now no, it's, it's California. California's Great America. Okay. And Mike Drucker. Yeah, cool Paramount anymore? Yeah. No, it hasn't been for like 15 years. Yeah. So here's the fucking deal, dude. Wow. You hear, you know, you're familiar with Disneyland, right? I'm from Florida. One of my, okay, yeah, so you got, you got I'm the world. With you Disney got the world. world. Yeah, world One of my favorite things of all time. This was essentially just Nickelodeon land. Yeah. And when you're a little kid, that's a, there's a Disneyland and a Nickelodeon land. Let's yeah. fucking go. You'd go. There's like a water park, and instead of water, it would slime you. Oh. Just like Nickelodeon. I didn't know that. that was fantastic. You can do. There was live versions of the game shows, so Double Dare and uh, really Guts cool. and all that stuff. So you can like, yeah. just wait in line and be one of the chosen ones to perform in front of. Hundreds of dumb kids. Um, there were all the characters were walking around, so the Rugrats and all that stuff. But then in addition to that, the roller coasters were like Top Gun. Yeah. Where it's like, are you kidding me? Fucking There's a awesome. Top Gun ride. The line you'd be going through. It's just like Disneyland, yeah. where it's like it's all themed. You're hearing the Top Gun music play. Right. It was fantastic. Fantastic. We didn't know what we had. Hello Seven ride. One of the best. There was a James Bond was, ride. I have never heard Dude, of this all theme this park. Stuff. There was a I have um, never heard of Jurassic it. Jurassic Park. Right by San Jose. I, I, you know, I never went to California until I was an adult. Mm. Mm. There was so much, and it was so freaking great. And then one day, they just took it all from us. And they're like, you know what? They sold it. It's now California's Great, Adve yeah. great America. And the rides, it's all the same rides. They're just lame, they're just lame as fuck. Like Top Run, <laughs> what was it's it like, called it's now? Called like Top Pilot Sky or something. High. <laughs> it's like, no, really, though. Top Deck or Sky Deck. Top, Sky Deck, that's Super what it pilot. is. And it's like, oh, good lord, this is and fucking lame no as cool hell. Music and then it's just silent. When you it's, walk it's just, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like generic stock music of right. like, you know, just think of Air Force music. Right. And then it's just like, oh, God. But then the worst thing is it's like they replaced all the characters walking around and all of the, the Nickelodeon stuff with Snoopy. Oh, yeah, Snoopy. Kids love Snoopy. And it's just like, <laughs> License all right, like, you can't get Nickelodeon. I guess Snoopy and friends are walking around. It's just like, like, God Heath damn Cliff. it, man. <laughs> 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 oh, man, it was Everyone such a, such a disaster. Cliff. Anyway, uh, for the story here, <laughs> update Paramount's animated feature amusement. 
What are what are Paramount? I'm realizing as I'm reading this right now that they are not opening an amusement park. <laughs> they are putting out a movie called Amusement Park. <laughs> you fool! You played yourself. But there was a Paramount amusement park, and we will never forget Paramount's Great America. Whatever. I guess I'm going to read this anyways. I, I will say the, the the deadline headline, which I did not mean to rhyme. The deadline headline. Uh, is being a little too cute and it confuses yeah. you. I, I mean, I thought it was weird they said on instead of in. Right. But, all right, whatever. It's, it's, Paramount's it's, animated yeah. feature amusement park is now scheduled to open on March. See, they're getting too fucking cute. Yeah. On March 15, 2019. The previous date, well, I don't care about previous dates. No one knew this was a movie. What is it? Marks, uh, what? Amusement Parks marks the directorial debut of Pixar animator Dylan Brown and features a big name voice cast that includes Matthew Broderick, Jennifer Garner, Jeffrey Tambor, Keenan Thompson. Okay, keeping in Nickelodeon a little bit. Ken Jeong, Mila Kunis, and John Oliver. Given the lead time required for an animated movie, it's a really good sign when it moves up. Okay, cool. Too much editorializing. He I, seem like man. the kind of guy that would editorialize. <laughs> Anthony D'Alessandro? You tell me that Anthony D'Alessandro won't editorialize? Look how mad he looks. <laughs> <laughs> he does whatever the fuck he wants to do. Um, Wait, go, go to the comments for Deadline. Because Deadline has the worst comments in entertainment. I just want to scroll to see if what the comments are on it. No, wait, scroll down. Oh. Let's see. One comment. Uh, never mind. Sometimes on Deadline, like, because me and my friends will obsessively read Deadline because we're selfish. And the comments are always like, it's like, imagine YouTube comments, but they understand your industry. So they'll oh, be like, you're no. going to be a failure. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> and like, Deadline will post everything that happens. So when I got signed by my agent, they had like an article that was like everything that age, everyone that agency had signed recently. And my name was on there. And I was like, this is so cool. And the only comment was just the word, who? <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I'm nothing. <laughs> you're, you're something to me. Uh, next story. This is not much, but it's uh, Evangeline Lilly getting ready for the... Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Shoot. Look at those arms. Yeah. God damn. She is in fighting shape. And I love my girlfriend last night saw this picture and she was just like, I just want to, I just want that. I'm gonna work for that. I need that. Get paid I'm like, five million. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get a physical trainer to fucking do your whole life. And yeah. there you go. But no, this is gonna be awesome. I am stoked for this movie. Yeah. I, I think it's gonna be really good. It's so weird. You're stoked for the sequel to the Ant-Man movie. Who would have thought? Who the hell would have thought anyone would be excited for Ant-Man 2? I like the Marvel movies. I'm fine Me with them. Me too, They're man. fun. I mm -hmm. love them. I love them, but yeah. like when I heard Ant-Man was going to be a movie, when I heard that um, Doctor Strange is going to be a movie, I was like, oh, man. We'll see. Yeah. And now... Guardians well, of the Galaxy. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, is great. It's, just, it's insane. What we need is a Moon Knight movie or a Moon Knight TV show. I, don't know. I hear people saying Netflix that'd be really cool, and it's like that seems like a Netflix. Yeah. thing. It seems more like a Netflix thing, but sort of like a damaged, messed up Batman type. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's great. Like where you're like, I don't know if this is a good idea for him to be out here. Like, but like, I know <laughs> but like I'm not going to stop Punisher. him because I'm scared. <laughs> that is the Punisher. I know yeah. that's the Punisher, but I feel like the Punisher goes so far with it that you're like, it's a bad thing he's out there. Yeah. Well, it's where, different. Yeah. yeah, Punisher's violent. Where right. Moon Knight's fucked up. Right. Where Moon Knight, you're like, are you okay? Yeah. And I always like that. Anyway. Uh, next. Random ass picture of people. This is Haley Steinfeld, uh, who plays Charlie Watson in the Bumblebee movie. Finally, the Bumblebee um, movie. And you can see her decked out in her 80s look, because the movie takes place in the 80s. Uh, I'm actually. No. I don't want to no. say I'm excited for it. A Transformers movie not directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> like, I'll give it that. Set in the 80s. They're getting some things right it here. It could be good. John Cena is the star. And I like John Cena. I like I'm John Cena. I'm a big Cena. fan of John Cena. So, where could this go wrong? It, it's still a Transformers movie. And and her, the girl from Pitch Perfect 2. Which, ah, <laughs> oh, Are you excited for Pitch Perfect 3? Dude, okay, so let me tell you about that. <laughs> Pitch Perfect 1. Yeah. One of my... It's a great movie. Like, most surprising movies of yeah. the last 10 years, where right. I'm like, I did not think I'd like it. I fucking loved it. Right. I want to put it up there in the same caliber as Mean Girls, in yeah. the sense that like I didn't expect to like it and I loved it. Right. Mean Girls, obviously a step above. Course, mean yeah. Girls is a fucking 10 out of 10. Uh, but Pitch Perfect 1, I was like, this is great. Pitch Perfect 2, so excited for. It was not a good movie. Yeah. It was a bad movie. We didn't need to go back to the Pitch Perfect well. It, we did not. And now the trailers for Pitch Perfect 3, right. I'm like, if you lost me, who is your audience for this? Right. I hope it's good. They're I turning into the Fast and the Furious. I think their audience is their audience. You're not their audience. I don't know. I feel like I should be, though. <laughs> I really do. I feel like if they're not getting me with Acapella and Anna Kendrick, right. I don't know who they're getting. There's a, an executive who's walking in another another executive's office right now being like, we've lost him. We Jenny. lost him. We, we lost him. We need to him. recut this trailer. Well, did, have you seen the trailers for three? Yeah. 
it's a Fast and Furious movie. Yeah. They're like jumping out of exploding boats and shit. Yeah. How? I, I kind of need to see the movie just to see how they get there. <laughs> because they're a good acapella group. I guess you're right. They're the best acapella group. They're the best acapella group. They're actually group. so good that they're going to compete against actual music groups. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're doing this yeah. time. Yeah. Ruby Rose is in it, though. That's cool. Yeah, I remember I saw that in the trailer. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's, let's read some tips. This comes from Alex Alexev, who says, I just watched Kind of Funny Live 3. Thank you guys so much. You legit made me happier. Great. What a great comment. That's great. He was happy, and now he's happier. Thank you very much. Hell yes. I will take full credit for that. My 10 minutes and three hours. Anakin says, hey, kind of funny, just paying my birthday tax. Things haven't been looking so well on my end, but I always make sure I have time for all things kind of funny. Oh, Thank nice. you, guys. Thank you. Well, I hope things are get better for you, you know? Have a good day. Do something nice. Go eat some fish. I didn't mean that sexually. I just meant that like... <laughs> Nobody thought you meant it sexually until yeah, you said I, that. I, I, <laughs> Nobody, nobody went there until you went there. We're all like, oh yeah, have, have some salmon. That's good for you. So we do this thing, Drucker, on the show called P.S. I Love This Best Friend, yeah. XOXO, where you can go to kindoffunny.com slash best friend and nominate someone else in the community that's doing some dope shit that should get a shout out. Just like Dan Vale did. He's shouting out John Esparzo, a.k.a. John Astro, who I'm pretty sure we've shouted out not once, but twice on this show before. No one is marking them off. But I, I don't, I think this is for a different oh, okay. thing, though. So he's just such a great dude that people just keep shouting him out, which is fine. Great. Which is fine. Met him at Kind of Funny Live 2, and he came in clutch for a room share when I forgot to book a night. Love him to death. We still talk often, and I can't wait to see him again. See, we, we got That's a good great. community. No, you have a great community. great I've... people hanging out with each other, sharing rooms, eating fish. I think it's no secret that... Uh, a lot of the communities in games and nerddom are awful. That's not a secret. You have a great community. Like when I went to Kind of Funny Live Three, like people are excited to be there and they're happy and like everyone's like planning these meetups. It's a really good community. It's cool. Uh, so thank you guys for not being awful. Thank you yeah. guys for being good. And they love you too. What, oh, what I love is the Kind of Funny extended family yeah, yeah, universe, yeah, yeah. where it's like it's the people that have come to live shows, watched the videos, right. seen everything, where they like watched you on GOG in the morning shows and yeah. stuff. So it's like there's this extra level of pride when they see you come on stage. Yeah. Where, even if they're watching the video later where it's just like, fuck yeah, Drucker, know, you know, know I know person. that guy. It's awesome. What I think you guys do right, and I think you just did it, you know, or whether you did it on purpose or not, is that a lot of communities tend to be exclusionary. It's like, you're a member of this community, so you're in this secret group. And that's cool if you're inside it, but if you try to come in from inside, there's a lot of like, who are you, why are you here? And your community, kind of funny community, and it's a lot of you people doing it too, I don't mean to attribute it all to these assholes. We don't do anything, really. Is you guys that it feels very it. inclusive. So people are excited when you're excited about kind of funny. So it's like, oh, you're here. Yeah. That's so great. There's more of us. It's not yeah. like, it's not like, oh, God, there's more of us. Like, we're you know better I mean? than them. You know, right, it's exactly. just more like, hey, everyone, let's just like dumb shit. Exactly. And I think that just makes it more fun. It makes it easier. I don't Absolutely. Know. Now it's giveaway time. Every day we give away a video game. There's four ways to win. One, be in the Twitch chat. Two, be a Twitch subscriber, which you can do on Twitch. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you can use your Twitch Prime account to get a free sign up every month. You need to redo it, renew it every month, which kind of sucks. But we appreciate it if you'd use it on us. But if not us, use it on someone. You're paying for it anyway, so you might as well. Daniel Dwyer is a good bet. Alfredo is a good bet. You have a Twitch account? I do have a Twitch Mike account. Drucker's a Mike Drucker is a good bet. It's M-I-K-E-D-R-U-C-K-E-R. So yeah, you can do that and it'll be great for everyone. The other two ways are support us on patreon.com slash kindoffunny or patreon.com slash games at the $2 or above level. Today's winner is getting World to the West on Xbox One. Never heard of it. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I was going to say it. that. Tweet at me. Let it me know. It could be a great game. It could be. It could Who be the a hell great knows? Game. Uh, but let me know what you think about it. Uh, and the winner is from Twitch chat. Vic Darkbomb. Ba 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 ba. Wow. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that Tuesday energy we're all bringing. Yep, exactly. And now it's time to talk to the chat for a little bit. What's up, chat? Let's see. Let's what are people saying? Uh, KJ Bell says Mike Mother Drucker. Yeah. So there's that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Uh. How are you all doing? I'm just going to look at you while Tim looks at the chat. Hope you're all feeling okay. I hope you're getting through your days if you 
Nina. Retro oh, Retrobot Junior says Tim is kind of funny getting a Sonic Mania review code. Yes, we are. When I don't know, and I am itching for it. I keep refreshing my email, just hoping that it's going to be there. You right. ever been in that situation? Yes. Where you're yes. just like, I can't fucking wait. Yeah, you're like, Ooh, come on. Well, you know what? I I saw that when I came in today. Can you, can had you a, get it? The box. Oh yeah yeah, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, you had you had the Sonic Mania mock-up box, and I thought you had the actual game, and I got excited, and it was like, and I opened it, and there was nothing in there, there. Was nothing. and I felt so betrayed. In in one of the nerdiest things I've ever done, which is a testament, is a testament to, to you, a lot, because this wall has buttons on it. Exactly, exactly. Um, I saw so Andrew Renee mm -hmm. gave me a Sonic Mania instruction manual that they made. Uh, that they gave out at different events at right. Comic Con. And I didn't get to get one. Right. She gave me it because she didn't give a shit. Yeah, who cares? and I was like, it meant a lot to me. And then I saw online that someone made a custom Sonic Mania Genesis box. Right. And I'm like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I had a Genesis box, so I'm like, I'm gonna print the yeah. thing out. And to be fair, the print's pretty sh shitty right now. I need to get it nicer done. But boom. It's That's a fake Sonic Mania thing. They're not releasing this game physically, but it doesn't matter. I still have a cool thing to put on my desk because I'm a fucking nerd and I can't wait for this game. That's it's going to so. be the best Sonic game of all time, Drucker. I can't wait. I'm very excited for Sonic Mania. I'm not even a big Sonic person. I think I was for like a couple, like a year in the Genesis days, mm -hmm. but I'm really excited. It must have been for a it. real good year, though. It was a good. It was like the year that like Sonic One came out, then Sonic Two came out, almost like the immediately, exact, immediately like after. too soon, almost. Yeah, yeah. I remember Toys R Us had a pre-order bonus of a T-shirt, and I was like, you could get something for pre-ordering a video game. <laughs> This can't yes. be a scam. <laughs> um, and then, and then, it, like years later, I'm like, why am I disappointed by this game I pre-ordered to get a T-shirt for? Mm, anyway, mm. Uh, I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's, you know, it just seems like it. The team that made it understands Sonic, yep. and it's weird to acknowledge that the fans understand the franchise better than the owners of it do. But that's, I mean, you, we've seen it so many times. Like, I, I always, I'm a broken record with right. this, but Ninja Turtles on TV now is yeah. better than Ninja Turtles has ever been. Transformers yeah. is better now than it's ever been because the people that grew up watching, watching and consuming the content, right. whether it's comics or video games or whatever, they know what these characters mean to them. Right. So they add that level onto it. There's so much backstory yeah. of the action figure games they played in their backyard that they're adding to the, right. the canon of it that gives it that love. And I feel like these Sonic games are going to be better than the original Sonic I games agree. because it's going to be how these people remember those games feeling, not how right. they actually felt. Right. I think that's why we liked Mario Maker so much was because it was like Nintendo meeting fans halfway where they're like, yeah, go for it. We're still going to have complete, very Nintendo control of this, but we want to see what you do. Yeah. And then you play these levels where you're like, that's the best Mario level I've ever played. So good. Uh, Peppermint Gentleman says, Mike, what's the best comedy show currently on television? Oh, that's a really tough question, especially because I'm applying to a bunch of them. <laughs> um, I would say my favorite show on TV right now, which I'd say is a comedy show, is Rick and Morty. I really like Rick and Morty. I really like BoJack Horseman. Um, I really like The President Show. I'm also super political, which I know it can be super annoying, but I like The President Show with Anthony Tamanek. Um, I think Seth Meyers has really good segments. It's still sort of a talk show, so if you don't love talk shows, but a lot of his monologue's good. He has, I think, the best joke writer in the English language working for him, um, a guy named Alex Bays. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. So, do you know any joke writers in other languages? Um, I know one or two comedians who do like French comedy. Mm. French comedy is very weird. Yeah, I can imagine. But uh, so yeah, there's a ton of there's a ton of shows I like. Shadow Drag says, "Have you guys watched the Netflix Voltron series?" I have not. I have not. I want. I heard to. really good things though. Similar good things. to what I was saying, I hear it's better than Voltron ever was. Yeah. Very cool. Let's do a Captain N reboot. <laughs> I, think, I don't know. Why I said I think like it's I Canadian. I think it's time. Um, Buddha of Love says, "Hey Drucker, what's the funniest thing Bill Nye has ever said to you?" <laughs> um. I've heard stories from the 70s and 80s that are very interesting when you imagine them with Bill Nye. <laughs> I love that. Um, but he's actually a super, he's a super funny guy. What's funny about Bill is um, bef when he was a mechanical engineer at Boeing, he was doing stand-up in Seattle at the same clubs that I did when I lived there like 20 years later. Mm. So we have like stories about like the same dudes who were old when he was a kid w are like ancient now, but like be like, oh, that guy who runs that terrible comedy competition. And I'll be like, oh my god, I've done that competition. So we had this weird connection over Seattle comedy. Huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Keep Him Here says, Tim, have you watched the new Jay-Z video? I haven't, but my brother ran in very excited today to talk to me about it, and I didn't understand what he was saying. It's a very good video, and you had the blankest stare on your face yeah. listening to the description. Yeah, it was, uh, it was something. Um, it's a good video, by the way. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh. Directed by Alan Yang, who's one of the co-creators of Master of None. 
Really? Yeah. Also a great guy. Great show, too. Great show, too. Yeah. Man, I lost... Oh, here we go. Oceanic Survivor says, Mike, any chance you could bring Shit Arcade to the internet in the future via YouTube, Twitch, or Patreon? Um, I really want to. The first, the first two failed because um, the... Tr we tried to stream it, however, due to Wi-Fi problems and a problem I had streaming both to the projector and through my Elgato thing, it just kept falling apart. So I kind of need to refigure out how to do it. You need but a Kevin. I need a Kevin. I need I need a U, but I need a U that's portable, like that can go to like small black boxes. Yeah. Uh, black box theaters. The the problem is just that the, with the technical setup we had and the way the stage was and the you know the projector things just started glitching out like either i could stream it and it wasn't going to the projector right or no sound was coming through either side but it was hitting both screens so i had to ditch it both times but i'm trying to work on that i'd love to also tour with it um i don't know if you guys ever want to do a version of it we could always do i'd that. fucking love to yeah that sounds maybe great. we'll do it here sometime um but yeah I, I definitely the answer is yes i'd really like to do that we're in sub only chat now sean from detroit says the name keith irritates me so much i cannot bring myself to watch voltron <laughs> That's fair. That's a fair reason to not watch a show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesse fucking Lane says, if the whole world stopped sneezing all at once, how long would it take people to notice? Probably like... <laughs> an I'd interesting have, question. I, I would say like four months. Yeah? Because you wouldn't notice it, then you'd be like, I haven't sneezed in a long time. I mean, I, I don't think I ever think about sneezing. So I don't think it would ever cross my mind. I could never sneeze again, and I probably wouldn't notice that no. I hadn't sneezed. I mean, if someone would talk about sneezing, you'd be like, I haven't sneezed in... Like, I have a cold, I don't but think so. Years. I don't think so. Or like, you'd I be just like, don't think about it like that. Yeah. I can't remember what your sneezing is like. It's, it's very forceful. It's but one... I don't know right. the sound. I know it's Greg's one sound. big... Maybe sound. we've stopped sneezing. No, no definitely we not. Greg sneezes all the time, and it's always scary. But not recently. See? Andy sneezed yesterday. Andy did sneeze yesterday. Okay. We're good. We're good. All right. Sneezing's <laughs> back, everybody. It's like Voltron. <laughs> it's better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> um. Twitch chat sucks sometimes because like I see good things and then they fucking then they, they just up, go yeah. away and I'm just like, oh, where'd it go? Yeah. Let's see. We don't have too much left. Oh, Lexi Gunner, this is the last one for the day. It says, Great. hey Mike, are you going to audition for the stand-ups on Netflix if they make another season? Um, I'd love to do it. I've definitely, because I've worked for Netflix, I've talked to them about doing stand-up stuff. I just don't have the time right now. I would love to do it. And the, the honest answer is I don't have the time, and it's not because I haven't been on the road as much as I'd like to. The material isn't as solid in a 60 or 30 minute block as I'd really like it to be for that big of a TV taping. But I'd definitely like to do it some way, and there's definitely been some conversations about it. Hell... Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about that. We should make it happen. Mike, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is always I like so that much you fun. came through. Yeah. Like, I like that you're like, you know what? I got a couple hours. I'm going to spend it with my boys. Yeah, exactly. It's great. Uh, we're about to start Kind of Funny Games Daily, so don't move your butts. Stay tuned and all that stuff. Till next time, love you. Bye bye.